Today we're bringing you a special edition of Homeworthy. Prepare to become charmed as we take you on a tour of this stunning 8,000 square foot mansion in Dallas, Texas. 22 interior designers were tasked with transforming different rooms in just six weeks. And the results are jaw dropping. So come along as we take you inside the Kips Bay Decorator Show House and be sure to comment and let us know which room you love the most. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi Homeworthy, welcome to my space. I'm Sarah Hillary with Sarah Hillary Interior Design in Richmond, Virginia. This room is called Tea for Two. It's a room that was inspired by a recent trip to Tryon Palace in Newburgh, North Carolina, where I toured rooms that were dedicated to um, taking tea, philosophical discussion and playing time. So this room um, is trying to foster face time that old school traditional way of communicating and sharing ideas and making connections with people. Um, we have designed custom pieces here. Um, this frame was designed by me to represent um, French mansard windows and Fleur Home custom made that for me with a piece by Dana Gibson. I also uh, custom designed a tea cart to fit this little jewel box space by Worthen Furniture. Um, and I've got Christopher Farr draperies that really set this um, space apart. Um, the wood paneling just warms up the room um, and the tile all from Atlanta with um, European wood and source. And then last but not least, I love this oyster shell light um, that's on the ceiling by Paolo Machino through James Showroom and the um, wallpaper that's got the twinkling stars to Reach for the Stars um, by Palm Orleans. For this space, I carved out this niche and then had uh, Billy Baldwin Studio create this custom 10-foot sofa for me um, with Stroheim's rich cotton velvet um, mixed with uh, their beautiful trim along the bottom that just softens the whole thing and gives it a whimsical layer. And then I've mixed Kravitz, or excuse me, Lee Jofa's fabric along with Tebow's to sort of create this play on the blue and green theme that we've got going that play beautifully off the Christopher Farr um, draperies. So the focal point of this room is this glass wall that houses this beautiful custom piece by Dana Gibson. And um, she had painted this leopard and had it custom made in the size to fit my frame, um, which was a treat in this short time span. Um, and Fleur made the frame and they did such a great job mixing Christopher Farr's pattern and um, my custom design. So we have this um, custom tea cart or bar cart in our space and I feel like the trick to making it successful is to put layers and layers of things on it. So here we've got cards, we've got plants, I've got a collection of boxes, tea. I've got these wonderful old books that are leather bound. Um, you know, it's just a great place to put your knickknacks and show off things that you love um, in your space and kind of captivates your guests and tells them a little bit about you and your interests. Hi, my name is Darren Henault. I have a design firm called Darren Henault Interiors in New York. We're at Kips Bay in Dallas, and I was given the opportunity to design one of the guest rooms and a guest bath that's adjoining. So the interesting thing about Kips Bay is historically, when it's been in New York, they ask somebody to take a house that's for sale off the market. So the reason there's always been a very short period of time that you had to get it done really, really quickly was for that reason exactly. I'm not quite sure why they still do it on that ridiculous time frame, but they still do it on that ridiculous time frame. So 
We get invited the end of August to participate. They assign the rooms. Um, I'm not from here, so the whole thing was just done via photographs. Um, and then immediately, I start calling people, vendors that I've used for years, and seeing who's willing to participate. Now, here's what's interesting. I originally wasn't going to do the Kip Space Show House because I feel like, ugh, I'm old. I've done show houses. I've been around the block. I don't need to do this. Everybody that I called and asked about Dallas consistently said it is their biggest market in the country. Every vendor said have what ever and everything you'd like because it is the biggest market in the country. These ladies like to decorate and they like to decorate big. And the other thing somebody said to me is I looked at old photos of the past four years and there were some young kids doing funky things. And I called my friend Jamie Drake, who's a great decorator, who's a, a mentor to me. And Jamie said, absolutely not. He said, you do what you do, which is old fashioned high end decorating. So I have to tell you, I was thrilled when you all said you were going to come and cover this because I sort of feel like, you know, sometimes you get interviewed by people and it's the first time and you're like, oh God, how's this going to go? Their questions are going to be really mundane. But you all, you've done, you might remember me, uh, Homeworthy interviewed me in my country house in Millbrook. Homeworthy interviewed me in my city house um, in New York. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was a great experience. I thought you did an amazing job of making me sound smart, which is not always easy. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's sort of like coming home. Oh, look at that, coming home. Homeworthy, get it? That's good. So, yes, you might remember me like whispering about how much the trim in my room caused. And I, I fully admit that that was a, a moment of complete hysteria on my part. Um, I can't say that this trim is $10,000. An interesting thing is um, the shade store was a sponsor for the house. I'm used to working with work rooms that are really amazing with detail and more like dress couturiers, couturiers than they are work rooms. And so I asked the shades store all these questions. I was like, when you do the leading edge, do you hand stitch it? And they said, yes. When you do the hem, is it a blind stitch? Yes. So th they were fun to work with. And the great thing about Count and Tad is they have miles and miles of trim. And so they let me put it on absolutely everything. The other genius thing is I don't have to pay for it. So I have no idea how much any of it costs. I do know that the Gracie fabric although not obscene, is not inexpensive. So when the show house is over, we have to turn this back into a white box. And these are coming home because this is going to be a pair of pants. It's going to be a jacket. It might be a little hat. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be, but I'll be wearing this walking down Fifth Avenue at some point. The process is you get a white box. You've got less than 12 weeks to design it, find all the vendors, put it together, do construction because you literally have to move electricity. I had to move plumbing in the bathrooms. I moved a wall because I didn't like how small the bathroom was. Um, I had to find a contractor down here in Dallas um, and a local designer was incredibly helpful in that. Dallas, everybody has been so friendly. Look, New York's lovely and the design community is really supportive of, of each other and they're very generous. Dallas takes it to a whole new level. I mean, these people were just so thrilled to have everybody and anybody participate that they've all been really lovely and really kind. So I did, I, I, I hired a local um, architect and he helped me um, survey the room. So I had drawings to work with remotely. I walked into um, Fromental, which is the maker of this wallpaper. It's all hand painted on silk. Immediately they said, sure, you can take that. I then went into Gracie and Gracie's now making their wall patterns. They started digitally printing them on fabric. So this is sort of one of the first presentations of this fabric in the country for them. So they were really excited to participate. And then finally, I walked into Count and Tout, um, which has several brands under their header, um, and literally in 20 minutes chose the rest of the fabrics for the room. It, it's, it's 
I, I've been doing this for a long time. It's a pretty quick process. You know, it's funny. Everybody asks the question, what's your inspiration? And I would love to say that there was a thing, like I heard a Joni Mitchell song, and, that was, and, and that's sort of not how it works for me. It's the space. It's the, I don't, I, I hate a tray ceiling. Like a tray, this room has a tray ceiling. And a tray ceiling to me screams 80s, spec house, bad architecture. So immediately I knew I was going to make the ceiling look tented. Now, interesting, because I happen to have my own brand called Tent, um, but it sort of started from there. I knew the room, I knew the ceiling was going to be tented, I knew it was gonna be upholstered, and so we then just pulled all of the texture down from that starting point. So here's a little tour of the room. So I, as I mentioned, we started with the ceiling, then this is the Fromental wallpaper. This is silk and it's all hand painted. Ordinarily, it also would have been embellished with hand embroidery, but they didn't have enough time to get that thing done. Um, this is something that I designed. This is part of my furniture collection. I originally designed it for my kitchen so that I could sit here with my kids while my husband cooks. Um, but then remembered my husband hates when people are in the kitchen when he's cooking, so we never got to sit on the stupid thing. Um, this fixture, this light fixture, ages ago, I found a foundry in Florence that had all the molds for a sculpture called Tofanari from the 1940s. And he'd done nothing with the sculptures because they're all a little odd and weird. So I created a line of furniture and this is one of the pieces, it's a lamp. It's available at Maison Girard on 10th Street in New York. Um, and then this, like, because you gotta add a little more when you can add a little more, this is brush fringe that ordinarily would either be down or would be on a pillow. And we used it so it was pushing up to give it a little height. Um, you know, was this necessary? Nobody here in Dallas knows me. I, th I thought I'd throw some personal photographs here. A, because it gives a little color as to who I am and maybe people would feel like they had a little more intimacy with me in terms of hiring me to design their houses. Um, but also, it makes it feel like a room. It makes it feel like a proper room in a proper house, not just a show house, not just a showroom. Because that's, I, I don't like rooms that are cold. It, things have to be, fully worked out and, and, and really cozy. The rug um, is actually from my rug collection, from my store tent. This is a Lavar Cameron. Um, it's a beautiful rug. And weirdly, I called the warehouse and said, I need a Lavar Cameron. I need it to be this size. And one of the warehouse guys called back and he said, I literally have what you want six inches short on each side. So it's as though it was made for the room. It's, it's pretty brilliant. This is a sculptress that's in California. Um, I love her work. I love how organic it is. I think it's really beautiful against the background of the Gracie. I think it's really spectacular against the background of this. I love that it's a modern feature in a room that's otherwise relatively traditional. And then something that sort of happened organically that I wasn't really doing on purpose is these lamps. I had asked that woman to make lamps for the store as well. And so I had these in the store and they're the same material. They're a white plaster. And then I needed a ceiling fixture and it just seemed to me like I should keep going with that theme and have a connection that sort of wrapped both sides of the room. So that's another plaster fixture. That's from Liz O'Brien in New York. The upholstered pieces are, are my, from my collection. They're, they're sold at Tent. Um, and again, you know, ordinarily there'd be a massive tea cushion on this if this were coming out of some lousy factory. And instead, I, I keep the pillows sort of light so the seat is really deep and it's super comfortable. You don't need this decorative pillow here, but it's a show house and, you know, we added it. On the chaise, same thing. The scale of the chairs, um, the length. Literally, it was very important to me that a tall or short person, one could sit this way with their legs this way, and somebody could sit that way with their legs this way. And it's intimate, but you're not on top of each other. So you don't feel like 
you're cramped into a single chair. It really feels like the super luxurious chaise. So yeah, scales, super important. I also, you know, you'll notice this is on the diagonal. I, I do this all the time. I, I can't stand when furniture hugs a wall too tightly. Like no piece of furniture should be closer than two inches from a wall. Like a piece of furniture has its own life. It should be able to breathe. Um, and I, I just think putting this on the diagonal made it more dynamic. And speaking of placement, the, uh, so often you walk into a bedroom and there'll be a desk, but the desk will be facing the window. And so you have your back to the room and you're not actually experiencing the room while you're working at the desk or it'll have the back to the window. So you're looking at the room. If you put it perpendicular to the window, you get the whole experience. You get the ability to look outside. You get the ability to see the room and enjoy the room. So for the antiques in the room, I didn't really want to ship a ton of stuff down from the people I usually work with in New York. So I went on first dibs and I just scoured Dallas for pieces that I was interested in. And luckily I found this pair of chest of drawers and when I called the guy, he's like, I'm really sorry, they're not a matching pair. I was like, perfect, I don't want them to be a matching pair. Like, they're so much better not matching. And it sort of gives the feeling that one's female, one's male. Not that you can't have two men living in this house, but it, 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 I love a mismatched pair. I think a mismatched pair is great. This, this is a textile from Jack Leonard Larson. Jack Leonard Larson was very influenced by Asian textiles. And I, I love the way, uh, I didn't purposely create sort of an Asian theme, but you know, the Chinese pattern on the windows from Gracie, this from Jack Leonard Larson, the weeping willow walls, it all sort of comes together. People often say, God, you're amazing at putting things together. And can I tell you the truth? It's sort of something that happens in the back of my mind. It's not always something that happens intentionally. I pull things and my eye is just putting things together and the back of my brain is connecting them. And it really isn't until they're all laid out that I start to see the connections. It's, it's rarely that intentional. I don't like thematic rooms, so it's rarely that intentional. And then just one final thing about this is this is a company, I walked into a store on the left bank of Paris 20 years ago called Galerie de Lamp, and they made the most beautiful light fixtures. And luckily they're now represented in the United States by I think Ayatesta in Dallas um, and John Roselli in New York. Um, and I, 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 there, I don't know, there's this sort of architectural weird mechanic vibe to them that's very 19th century, which I, I just relate to. I, I think works incredibly well with all of my work. Honestly, I purposely displayed a bunch of books on the ottoman at the foot of the bed so that people aren't just throwing their clothes all over the, uh, the ottoman. Um, you know, frankly, I'd rather they threw their clothes on the floor than on the ottoman. Um, I just find if you use this, if it's a flat piece and you use it more as a coffee table, people are less likely to just continually throw things all over, throw their clothes as they're getting undressed at night. One thing I want to point out about this is, this is actually a vertical pattern. This is a series of stripes, embroidered stripes on a fabric from Cowton. And I just cut one layer out and use that as a skirt on the ottoman. So as a foil, to all of this prettiness, all of this elegance, I hung a piece of art by a woman named Ann Harris. Now, Ann Harris historically did um, uh, decorative painting on walls for, and created entire rooms. And she, you know, wanted to do something a little different, so she started doing these paintings. And this is one of a parrot claw, which I thought was really cool. And I actually moved this wall to make the bathroom bigger, but I moved it exactly so that that piece of art would fit. Then these closets, we mirrored the closets because I wanted to make sure that it created a double image of the claw coming back at itself. And then additionally, 
I also wanted to make sure that if somebody was in the room and at that angle, they saw the reflection of the bathroom to make sure they were drawn into the bathroom. So for the bathroom, I worked with artistic tile. Um, I don't think bathrooms should be a cacophony of color. You're gonna be naked and there's a lot of mirrors, so you're gonna be seeing all this color behind you. I do not wanna look at greens, purples, oranges behind me when I'm naked. I want something relatively neutral. So this is Arabiscata. It's a relatively neutral uh, stone, but it has a fair amount of movement to it, so it creates a beautiful pattern. So you'll notice I used that material, but in different textures. So we've got the groove, we've got the um, slab, and then I cut that grooved tile to create the baseboard, to create the casing around the window, and then finally to create the um, crown in the room. And then the floor was chosen to be polar opposite of the walls, to give it a really grounded feeling. It's got what's called a leather finish, which is super, super textured, great for not slipping on. Um, and I, I just think it's a really beautiful contrast to how subtle the walls are. And then finally, just to add a little bit of jewelry, that same Arabiscato comes as a, um, here, step into my shower, comes as a um, mosaic. And the mosaic gives you the benefit of lots of traction on the floor, so you really won't slip. But then I kept it going up the wall and I did it on the ceiling just to give it a little bit more glitz without going too far over the top. What I love most about my room is I did the installation and then I called my husband and Michael uh, and he said, how do you feel? How, 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 how do you feel about it? And I said, honestly, it's a room we would live in because it's, it's layered and textured. Look, I never want somebody to walk into a room that I've done and go, wow, that to me is, that means I didn't do my job. That means it's too flat, two dimensional, doesn't work. If I've done my job, you need to sit in that room and be in that space for 10, 15 minutes minimally before you've really started to absorb what's happening because there's so many layers, there's so much texture. Um, hopefully the furniture layout is dynamic and incredibly useful and creates various places to sit in one space. So it's a multi-purpose room. Every room should be a multi-purpose room. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm River Spencer and welcome to my Kips Bay Dallas 2023 bedroom and bathroom. This room was imagined as a luxury guest hotel suite, first a bedroom and then a bathroom, complete with anything you would need um, up to the standards of a five-star luxury hotel. Uh, the room is based uh, as an homage to New Orleans, which is where my design firm is based out of. Um, and I started with a custom mural from Philip Jeffries. Uh, it shows a panoramic bayou scene uh, combined with uh, some magnolias and bayou white flowers. Uh, the magnolia is the Louisiana state flower. So everything kind of went off of that. Um, I tried to use as many New Orleans based fenders as possible. So the bed was uh, a collaboration between myself and Jane Scott Hodgins, who owns Leontine Linens. We actually did a bespoke border on the coverlet, which echoes the mur mural of um, magnolias and bayou white flowers, and then uh, the same in the monogram. So Leontine did the entire bed. Um, 
And then I tried to bring New Orleans into the space as well by mixing uh, warm wood antiques juxtaposed with very light, bright, and airy colors. Uh, I wanted to take advantage of the natural light in the space. And then I also wanted to make the room feel longer and bigger than it actually is. It already is longer than it is wider. And so I used a large white carpet as the base, only coming off the edge a few inches. Um, as you can see, the room has several vignettes. Um, this is a Parisian directoire 19th century ebonized desk, complete with a contemporary chair upholstered in a boucle. Um, the doors you'll notice are also upholstered in a scalamandra stripe, which complement the mural as well. Uh, the lamps on the Biedermeier nightstands are uh, vintage Murano, as well as the Murano chandelier that is in the cove of the ceiling of the room, which was loaned to me by Jan Showers, um, a Dallas design uh, noteworthy. Uh, one of my favorite vignettes in the space is this uh, secretary turned into a bar. So again, with the theme of wanting to make it like a five-star luxury suite, imagine you're at the Creole in Paris or you're at the in the Windsor suite at the Ritz, and I wanted it to feel like I had thought of every detail. So I incorporated um, a lot of those things and then also some personal touches. Uh, I created a mini bar here with some um, sweet and savory, even some M&Ms that are blush to go with the room with RS on them. Um, and then these are my own personal Waterford Lismore Essence uh, decanters and uh, a little Xanax pill box from a nightstand. Um, and then up here, these are actually really cool uh, Italian document boxes that I found at Round Top. And then this is a vintage Maison Jansen uh, cash pill. Um, a few other personal touches. I wanted to bring my grandmother into this. So this is her personal mint julep cup that I put the matches in uh, that I inherited. And then as we move over here to the breakfast tray that's on the canopy bed, um, this is my china but the it's the teapot with the cream and sugar and then i layered it with my great grandmother's depression glass um, plate and a cup and then the brass flatware is actually my grandmother's from the 50s so and then as well as that all of the crystal that all the flowers are in and then the water carafes those are all vintage um, that are part of my collection from my family so this is an example here, as well as the flower vase over there. So as well as conveying a sense of place uh, with a nod to New Orleans in most of these corners, I also wanted to convey a sense of point of view or design point of view. And every time I'm designing a room, I'm trying to create tension. So that tension comes from very sleek, uh, modern pieces juxtaposed with very fussy or more ornate or patinaed antique pieces. I think this is a really good example. So this is actually a beautiful contemporary um, cut velvet Daydar Milano fabric uh, on a very contemporary bench, which we reupholstered. And it's juxtaposed with this beautiful, very feminine antique mirror, uh, Venetian mirror. And if you'll notice, this has a hint of blush even in the paraclose part of this mirror. So one of my favorite parts about the room was almost an afterthought. Um, I love the, uh, the book matched antique Biedermeier nightstand and how it warms up the space, especially against the canopy with the beautiful um, cut velvet ivory and white trim. But I love this little tea gray vintage stool that I covered, um, I covered in the Scalamandra version of tea gray. I like to have a little piece of animal print in most of the rooms, um, just to give it a little bit of extra pizzazz. As we move to the next vignette in the space, you'll see um, two antique 19th century fauteuils, which are upholstered in a white cowhide and trimmed out in a Samuel and Son silk braided trim, uh, sitting tete a tete with a contemporary sleek marble cube in front of the fireplace. And then behind 
the um, the fauteuils or the chairs, you'll see um, a pair of 19th century columns and two statues uh, that are from a private collection. They're Rod Moorhead, who's a Mississippi artist, and they're the ladies holding parasols. Um, above the fireplace, you'll see uh, Katerina Chapuis, which is one of my favorite artists, uh, <clears throat> very contemporary abstract painting. And, the, and it's flanked by two custom Aurora sconces from uh, the esteemed New Orleans lighting designer, Julie Neal. Um, Julie Neal was also kind enough to donate a, or loan to me, a custom chandelier in here in the bathroom uh, that's plaster and it echoes the florals that are on the mural. As we move into the bathroom, the bathroom was meant to echo the same sort of um, design composition that the bedroom was, which is to juxtapose the old world antique with the clean, sleek, contemporary lines of the floating marble vanity. You'll see it again with the very contemporary Kohler sconces um, juxtaposed with the ornate 18th century period uh, antique mirrors, which are actually my own. Um, and you'll also see in the corner of the bathroom, another New Orleans native, uh, Kevin Gillentine, who's a good friend of mine, created this abstract. Um, and we hung the abstract here, not only to create an interesting visual vignette, but to create privacy for the space, a very large window, and this is a freestanding tub. Um, the space was kind of difficult to work with, and so we decided to make it classic, like a hotel would be with a 42 inch wainscot and then Calicotta Oro marble in 12 by 24s um, across the floor and then up the walls with a marble chair rail. Uh, the bathroom, uh, the toilet room, you can see this is my own personal Hunt Slonum painting. He's also a Louisiana native and you can see the Queen of England. He's known for his bunnies, but uh, this is my favorite. So I was playing with different shades of pink, so different saturations of the same color palette. The um, sort of piece de resistance in the bathroom is this very small dainty chair. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but it's not very practical, so you can't do it in a client's house. But the, um, the chair I actually found at a flea market and then had it uh, refinished and then upholstered in a Fortuny fabric and the seat is actually a uh, sheet moss that we built up into an upholstered seat. Welcome Homeworthy. My name is Mark D. Sykes. I am a designer from Los Angeles, California, and this is the Kipps Bay Show House in Dallas. And we are in Villa Windapane, which is what would be traditionally the dining room of this particular house but I wanted the dining room to be um, a little bit cozier, more intimate, so we made it more like a dining room, library, slash office. And um, the inspiration for this room was basically around um, Givenchy and Bunny Mellon and Billy Baldwin. I wanted it to feel like this all-American kind of space that was kind of clean and simple, yet super functional and super inviting and, comfor and comforting. Um, window pane is the motif of the room and featured in the room on the draperies and on the portieres, the walls and the ceiling is a window pane fabric that's a part of my new Schumacher collection. And it's in our kind of iconic blue and white. Another amazing feature of the room is the chairs on the room. All six of the side chairs and the bergere are all from the Givenchy estate that I acquired from Christie. So it's fun to have some of Givenchy's personal pieces in the room, as well as him being an inspiration for the room. The room is also filled with a couple of um, amazing things that I'm super, that I love. The piece of art is by Kit Ruther. She's a dear friend of mine from Nashville, Tennessee. I've known her for 25 years. And she, she allowed me to use her great piece of art. Um, two other really uh, amazing things in the room. First is this desk that I designed for this space. It's called the Hollyhock Desk, and it's in collaboration with Chaddock. And I love the finish uh, that feels a little bit more traditional, a little bit more historic, but the ivory poles give it a little bit more of a modern feel. 
the mirror is English. Um, it's a wonderful 200 year old mirror um, from Nick Brock Antiques, which I also think is great. Another feature of the room that I think is really fun is the room is filled with these personal things of mine that I love, uh, my own books, my World of Interiors magazine collection. That's like a 30 year collection. My favorite stationery from Smyson that I've used um, for the last 20 years. I'm aging myself. Um, something that's a feature in all of our show houses that we've done over the last 10 years is a phone. Um, this phone has gone from show house to show house. <laughs> and um, it's kind of a fun little feature that we have added to this particular space. Another really great thing about the room is the, the jardinieres. They're from Kimball and Bean. There's four of them in the space and they have ficus trees in them, which is really great. And then the last thing about the room that I think always adds a perfect touch are the plants and the flowers. And we just did simple hydrangea um, in this great basket. Uh, the ficus trees that I already talked about and some really great fresh flowers, cut fresh flowers here on the side. And then the last thing is there's some beautiful textures there in the room, beautiful antique wood boxes in the cabinets and kind of sprinkled throughout on the surfaces, as well as a bunch of baskets, uh, vintage baskets, little um, objects. Uh, the space before we did um, this installation was not dissimilar than it is to right now. It was just about a 15 by 15 foot box with eight foot ceilings. We did not do a lot of things architecturally to change it. We just basically decorated it. The crown molding was here. Um, the, the, the pendant motif was here. Um, we actually were pretty lucky to have a really kind of clean space. And then we just decorated it. Uh, the phone in this space um, that we have brought to many show houses that we've done in the past is just kind of an, you know, an ode to the past, um, to a different time period. You know, our design um, is inspired a lot by the past and um, kind of iconic interiors and phones just kind of give you that personal touch and um, make it different and unique. And um, I think it's just a really great, it's a talking point that people love. Many personal things that I brought to the space are the books and the magazine collections. And you'll notice in a lot of the books, there's post-its. And those post-its are um, for me personally over the years. I've dog-eared different things or put a post-it on other things that inspire me or great inspiration. And um, I'm just one of those people where I just never remove them because I like to kind of go back to see what I had tagged. But you'll see that that's um, in many of the books and many of the magazines in the space. So if I was entertaining in the space and having people for dinner, it'd probably be very much of a casual um, uh, event. We'd probably have a buffet in the kitchen and people would get their plates and come in here, pull up a chair and sit around the table. And most likely the menu would also be very simple and very easy. Uh, people love comfort food and that's most likely what I would serve. Um, but that would be most what we would do if you were entertaining. So I always love coming to Dallas. I love working in Dallas because I think the women of Dallas and people of Dallas love design. They love to entertain, they love gardens. Um, and we are classicists and traditionalists in nature with our design work. And I think the community here really appreciates that. Um, I think this room um, kind of depicts, it's a small room, but it also depicts the classic sensibility and a traditional sensibility. And it's just full of details. Beautiful trams, beautiful, the, you'll notice on the chairs and on the lampshades that we took the window paint and did it on the bias. There's beautiful cords and welts. There's just beautiful details. And I think the women of Dallas love details and they love um, the little things make a big difference. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Julie Hayes with Sims Hayes Design and welcome to Fern Returns. This is a room that I wanted to showcase freshness, lightness, a real feminine energy for a granddaughter. I decided to divide the space into two halves, one for kind of a seating area, congregating with friends, and then so we have the bedroom section here. It feels like a tree house. We have this window that has beautiful trees. The green fern wallpaper gives us an elevated feel with the stripes going up to the top of the tray ceiling instead of the bottom. We also have this lattice detail that's made out of plaster on the ceiling with a fern accent. Also in plaster, we have our vent 
returns and registers. And you can see that the wallpaper installers perforated the paper so that the, the pattern can continue up. Also, another little detail that I love are the lampshades from the Sister Parish fabric that we had made. It's just a nice detail that continues our green and white story. Also, Vaughn lighting, beautiful, beautiful lighting that they do throughout the room. And also formations with our plaster kind of repeated and some of our chandeliers. And then here we have our treage or lattice wall that separates the room. And then it also, since this is, has one window in the room, this oval gives us a peekaboo from the sitting area into the window. So we also, I wanted to have some warm elements as well. I like to have black with green and white. This is an antique chair that I own. I love the caning with the Charland England wicker piece that's under the that's under the little altar table. So I like these brown kind of warm elements with the fresh space. It can kind of helps anchor it. I wanted to do a mood board. I think that um, collecting ideas is such a fun thing to do. And I know that my daughter who's in her 20s is obsessed with doing that. I like hanging art on boards. I think this mirror, even though it's not literally art, I think it has the same effect. It gives some dimension to it. Again, we upholstered the back of the board in the Sister Parish fabric. Just kind of gives it a polished detail. Um, it's just been kind of a fun talking piece just to see. And also, I love mixing art on top of the wallpaper. We continue our color story. These colors sort of thread through the dressing room. This was a space that was a closet with shelves. And I wanted to, um, since we do have a closet, I wanted to do a little dressing area. And you can see we have a beautiful Fromental panel that's super elegant, glamorous, and dressing chair, and then a French marble and brass dressing table. We also have the beautiful closet with clothes. We have a client that has a, some stores and she was generous enough to outfit the closet with her pieces from Clover, Cabana, and Canary. We're back to the sitting area. The, uh, the furniture, the upholstery, this is something that I designed. It's an Emeritus Ellis fabric uh, that is part of her new line. And I've also hung a piece of art above that, above the sofa on the, on the separation wall. I feel like any place can be a place to have art. It always gives another layer that makes it interesting. And then also, I love this color. This beautiful pink boucle from Rogers and Goffagon is one of my favorites. This is an, a Geo Ponte chair that we had reworked and reupholstered. And I think it's super inviting for the kind of cozy seating area of this space. Again, we have vintage pieces. This from Jean-Marc Frey, Vaughn Lighting, and I think that the mirror re that reflects the window, the light, also this fern lamp with the mirror detail, I think is really nice since this is a windowless area. And I was um, at the new Tiffany's store and I saw how they were using silver for plants and orchids. And I really, really love bringing that in for, um, into this space, kind of an older thing that we haven't used in a long time. And I really love silver. I think it's time to kind of break it out of our silver closets. One of the things that I really love about this room is the bed. And I love repeating the wallpaper, the fabric, 
the pattern again on the upholstered bed. I think that people really like an upholstered bed. It's comfortable, it's inviting. You don't hit your head on anything hard. And I love to do custom bedding with monograms or without, either way. This is a ribbed matte lace instead of the diamond pattern. And then this app, this is actually an applique and we used a striped thread run instead of a solid, which I think this turned out really nicely for that. And again, on the sheets, sometimes we match borders and sometimes we try to match color. I really am a fan of winter white with a crisp white. I think this is a very feminine lace detail. And I think that, uh, I think it makes it a little more interesting. Also, who doesn't love like a yummy cashmere throw? And this pink one from Ellis Hill is just very, very warm and inviting. I kind of want to tell you about this dividing wall. For a long room like we have, I think this is almost 23 feet long. When I, proce when I process a space, I really like to take it to paper. I work things out and I looked at the space and I saw that if we divided it in half, we could really create two rooms here. One again without a window, cozier seating. And then on the other side of the wall with the window, it has kind of a treehouse feel. And when I did this on paper, I kind of had an aha moment and I knew that that would work. And it's interesting when I work with clients, I think if I had tried to sell this to somebody, this idea, I don't think that they necessarily would have bitten. So it's kind of great to get to show this in a show house. It's, um, it's kind of a little different, but I think it worked out and I love that we have these two areas. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Kirsten Fitzgibbons. And I'm Kelly Ford of Kirsten Kelly. Welcome to our Kipps Bay 2023 family room. Our inspiration for our family room was we wanted to create a very comfortable space that the whole family could enjoy together. We specifically did not have a TV or any other system like that because we wanted to inspire conversation and togetherness and family. And uh, the colors are very very calming and there's black uh, obscuring the boundaries because those ceilings were a little bit lower. We wanted them to appear higher with the stripe on the walls and the embossed crock from Philip Jeffries. The ceiling is just beautiful and it finishes everything completely. In creating the family room, which is really the heart of this home, we wanted to create a warm environment that people could just sit around, whether it's two people sitting fireside uh, in the sunlight, or we had you, earlier today uh, a dozen people almost sitting on the sofa and around the seating arrangement, which was exactly the uh, impetus for creating this wonderful family room. and. Uh, one exciting element of the room, one of the most exciting driving elements of the room actually is the sofa uh, or settee that we found on a recent trip to Round Top, uh, which is a beautiful Australian lamb settee. And we had designed the room and uh, around a flannel sofa and um, found this and thought we had to have it. Uh, and we were just praying that it was going to not only fit in our truck, but, but then again, fit in the room and translate into the room into sort of a, a Schloss feel that we had always dreamed about uh, designing a Bavarian Schloss, meeting uh, sort of the, the West and- uh, Alpine meets the city. Exactly. So, but when we replaced our sofa for this beautiful settee, it opened up an additional can of worms. So then we had to kind of change the table to make a bigger table. So that was easy to do because we have them stocked because we designed them at Off the Floor, our new store in the design district in Dallas, where everything is literally off the floor. So that was especially handy for us. And we also, some other treasures from Round Top, Texas that we got were these black chairs, 
the, the wooden chairs around and the painting, which we think really makes the room. So thank goodness we went to Round Top and it really changed our entire dynamic. So our Round Top treasures uh, coupled with and another piece that we had uh, found last year in Round Top, a, a wonderful wrought iron bench uh, in a Scala Mandre uh, tiger fabric um, was a wonderful addition to our sort of eclectic, uh, classically uh, inspired room with contemporary elements. Uh, and we also have this wonderful fire screen by John Lyle, which is bronze extremely heavy, uh, but very an artistic, beautiful element. Our mirror and our uh, beautiful cabinet, also uh, part of Kelly uh, and Kirsten Kelly's collection available at Off the Floor. And um, so I, we, we coupled everything and, and really came up with this fantastic room, which, which we love and we've been enjoying every all day today and and actually don't want to leave <laughs> one of our focal points um, of the room was this mantle wall which we wanted to really bring in a transitional look almost brutalist it has the ceruzed oak and the patinaed copper banding which was uh, enabled us to eliminate the mahogany mantle that was here and we just stretched it out and made one complete look on the wall and then the, the crowning glory is this beautiful David Sutherland sculptural convex mirror, which really makes the room. It does, and it adds a different dimension to the room, which is, it really draws you in. It's just a beautiful point of interest. And uh, to Kelly's point earlier about the, the final element uh, to a room adding the scent, uh, not only do we have our beautiful scented candles, uh, but we also have our, our basket of apples, which just bring in you know, sort of the scent of the season and the autumn and uh, anyway, and an just- ode to almond, to, to autumn. An ode actually. to autumn, exactly. Yes. A, a beautiful autumnal element and color. A designer is always faced with a challenge when they walk into a room for the first time, particularly if you're doing the Kip Space show house or a show house that you're under a major time constraint in which you have to sort of quickly put together uh, not only the design of the room uh, directly after your room assignment, uh, but also to be able to source everything so quickly. So uh, we were actually lucky enough to have been given the family room, which again, as I mentioned before, was the heart of the house. Uh, all of these rooms are sort of, uh, people walk through the rooms to, to get to the other spaces in the house, but um, it really draws everything together. And the ceilings were a little bit lower, and so, but, uh, so we had to deal with that challenge. Um, in addition to, it was a little bit older and needed sort of a renovation and um, sort of, uh, there were a number of archways in the room that we eliminated and so forth, and uh, but created smoother surfaces. Um, the beams we highlighted uh, in in a semi gloss uh, black, and really just just creating a beautiful warm atmosphere in the room. And we thought it was important to really take note of every surface and finish everything. And so we put the croc embossed wallpaper on the ceiling. We did the canvas stripes on the wall to kind of elevate the walls and make them look a little taller than they actually, the ceilings were. Um, and then we layered the rugs. And I think there is just great a play on patterns and colors and different shades and textures and it's very organic looking. A part of a successful uh, design of a room is to really create layers in a room as Kelly referenced but to make it feel lived in and I think that we really achieved that with this room uh, and just not only sort of the textural elements and the, the sort of the cozy uh, luxurious fur on the on the settee but uh, just with the plaids everything is just warm and comfortable and, and very inviting. Everybody has a seat. There's a seat for everyone. There are lots of places to sit and be comfortable and uh, all morning and all day people have just been coming in and flopping down and having their coffee, that, which is exactly what a family room is for. So we consider that mission accomplished. I think the first, the first thing to do in starting with designing your own room is to kind of pick a fabric or a feel that you're interested in and that you have to love it, not like it. Nothing can be just to, to make it work. You don't have to make anything work. You can find what you love. 
So we chose this color palette. We thought it was soothing. We thought it was kind of, you know, it could be a, a man could love it, a woman. It, it's just very fluid. Um, and so we picked some fabrics we liked and then other ones that went with them. And then kind of the shade would morph to different, more sage, more taupe. And then we'd find some more black, but they all, they, they don't all necessarily match per se, but they all complement each other. In a family room, we think a plaid is always kind of a mandatory pattern. It's just always evocative of, of home and, and history and family. And uh, again, different textures. We have the Fortuny pillows, we have the fur pillows and the fur on fur. We've got the Australian sheepskin in the channel uh, sort of upholstery pattern, which I think is another point of interest. Um, it just, it all kind of works together. So you just, you have to, you have to love what you're li gonna live with. Love what you put in the room and it'll work. I have eight dogs at home, so they are always wanting to be with us and we want them with us as well. So they're all over the furniture, but we also have a very special home that we've designed and created for them. They love to go inside. We can sit on top, you can put it, use it as a table. It's kind of just a beautiful fixture in any room, any pattern. We chose this one for here because we also think every room looks better with a little bit of an animal print. Here we have two, of course. But it's always nice to, like I said, everybody has a seat, including our furry friends. One of our uh, favorite fabrics that we uh, have incorporated in this room is this, this beautiful uh, floral linen, uh, and it's called Hollyhock by Couten and Tout. And we think it's just a beautiful uh, sage fabric. We love blues and greens and grays and so forth, which sort of translates well uh, with our quiet palette. And, um, and florals have really made a great comeback and so forth. And this is one of our favorites, but uh, it has translated very nicely, I think, into our transitional scheme uh, back here. We always like to kind of, I, I, our personal aesthetic is to bring a little old and new together and make it traditional eclectic. So we've kind of really embodied that on this back wall. We've got this great modern painting with a piece of furniture underneath it the lamps, and then, uh, you know, you have the older setup on the bar and the little biscuit bin and the ice bucket and the, and the uh, bronze horse sculpture. It, it kind of evokes different ages. Um, all kind of finished with this great wallpaper of from Philip Jeffries, the canvas stripe. We, Kelly and I designed this coffee table, which is a beautiful octagonal leather 60 inch coffee table. Uh, but styling the coffee table is always an exciting uh, aspect of doing a room successfully. And I think that it should incorporate interesting things or edible elements and well, uh, with the walnuts and so forth, um, beautiful candles and so forth. But we have these Venetian uh, glass blown eggs um, and also these Sommerso Venetian boxes, which we have collected uh, and we just love them along with our coffee table books, flowers, and it, it's just a very interesting element in the room. We think it's really important to have different aspects in designing a coffee table top. So it's always nice to have flowers, it's nice to have candles, they don't have to be arranged perfectly. If you kind of scatter them around and add different points of interest, like our walnuts that, you know, again, it's kind of very holiday and autumnal. Um, with the boxes, we always like a candle or hurricanes, books. So it's just, it's kind of a feast for your eye, but it's also something that can live there permanently besides the flowers, they can change out, but it always looks good whether the flowers are there or not, you can add different things to bring in seasonal elements. And again, to add to uh, what Kelly just said, it, it's a wonderful way to layer a room, which, which we've clearly done with this coffee table, but um, one might ask where to put uh, drinks or, or trays or something or hors d'oeuvres, which can obviously be put on top of uh, the book, or there, there's plenty of space to put down cocktails or anything else, but it's just sort of adds, adds a really fun design element to a room. So we always think it's nice to incorporate some sort of a bar where you can go make your own drink, pour something. And we, again, have something for everybody. We have martini shakers, glasses. 
we have these great new Baccarat colored glasses from our store, Madison. This whole thing comes from Madison in Highland Park Village. We have the Estelle peacock colored glasses with the matching decanter, which they knew uh, is new for the season. Um, and so it's nice to be able to just come and make your own drink. And again, nestled among this, we have the books. We've got a, a great uh, dish here that can have snacks or cards or anything like that. So framed again by our, our traditional eclectic look of the painting, the prints, the lamps. Um, so it's just like a really good feel and uh, everybody, everybody likes it. Hi Homeworthy, my name is Julie Dodson and this is my space at the 2023 Kipps Bay Dallas Show House. And this is what we're calling traditional today, which is my take on traditional design meets a little bit of a modern feel. My inspiration for this space here at the show house really all started with a little bit of research that I did and I knew that I wanted to um, really pay tribute to some of the the designers of the past that I absolutely have admired throughout my career. Um, I started with David Hicks, and as you can see from the balance that we did, was inspired by a room that he had done um, many years ago. Um, also, the rug that I found felt very David Hicks to me, so I wanted to incorporate this in the space as well. And Suzanne Reinstein, with her impeccable eye for antiques was something that really stood out to me and I loved the mix of antique pieces as well. So when I first um, saw the den space here, there were some bookshelves along the sidewall and I really wanted to open up the space. So I said, let's rip those out. I wanted the bookshelves to be an important part of the space and be a focal point. And in knowing that, I really wanted to add something extra special. So I worked with LaRue Leathers here in Dallas and Jerry Pear Leather, and I had her hand tool this leather um, and we embossed it in a metallic gold, which I feel like just added so much extra character to the space. Um, I also worked with Zoffany, which is where the color palette really came from. And this is a new introduction fabric from them that I used to drape the room. And this was kind of the springboard that really helped me to establish my color palette. So aside from this incredible Zoffany fabric and this hand tooled leather paneling that we did, another thing that I absolutely love about this space is this fabric from China Seas. It just brought a playfulness and a whimsy to the room that I feel like it really was screaming for. Um, it might be one of my favorite favorite details. Another really great thing that I loved about designing this space was just all the inspiration that I found just in my trips to Dallas and my trips, well, in Houston, just going from shop to shop to shop and really finding those pieces that I felt like were perf would be a perfect fit. Um, another resource that I had here in Texas was Round Top. And I got lucky in the fact that we had the antique show going on and was able to source some of my antique finds from out there as well. One of them being these beautiful patinaed green candlesticks that, it's, that are here on the coffee table was another one of my favorite finds for this space. Um, I just loved the antique feeling that it brought to the room in juxtaposition with the coffee table that's more clean and modern that I found at Walter Lee Culp here in Dallas. And then um, the light fixture, which to me really brought another element of playfulness to the space. And this piece I found out in Round Top at Excess Field. So in styling these bookshelves for the show house, I knew that there was gonna be a lot of pattern and some color going on in the space. So for me, I wanted the bookshelves to have kind of more of a restrained feel, but also have some visual interest. So I actually found these um, white, uh, just parchment paper covered books at Pottery Barn. And um, in shopping in Round Top, I found some really fun artwork that I just loved the color of that we incorporated as well. And some antique little fragment pieces that we mixed in. 
And then along the way, I found these at Walter Lee Culp um, that are from Formations, and I knew that I just needed that pop of brass to be in here in that metal. It was just another element of texture. So we played a lot with texture in this room too, which was really fun and mixing the old crusty antique with the new, and then again with the brass and the gold details. So for my Kip space space, since it is a den and most people enjoy watching TV in their den, I wanted to emulate that same feel as if this was your home and you were coming into your den and you were watching TV, which most designers, we try to hide it. Um, but in here, I just decided to rock with it and let it go. And um, the one nice thing also about tinting this room is that if you really wanted to conceal the TV, you could always just close the curtains and add a pretty piece of art or a pretty mirror on top of it. Another one of the pieces in this space that I absolutely fell in love with when I first saw it was this antique piece that I found from Bill Gardner Antiques in Houston. And there was something about it that it's antique, but it just had this, even though it's it's got a rustic feel, it had this sophistication that I absolutely loved and that I wanted to bring to this space. Another one of my favorite things to do in a space that is a little bit more traditional is to pop in a little bit more modern abstract piece of art. This, I worked with C2 Art Advisors and found this amazing piece um, that I feel like just worked so well in this space. And it also brought in that pop of color, which I think was really nice. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Laura Lee Clark Falconer, and I'm a designer based in Dallas. And welcome to our Kips Bay Showhouse room. We're in the living room. This is what I call the Cano Garden, which is based off of our beautiful hand painted wall covering by Gracie Studio. It really inspired the space. It um, has beautiful pools of cobalt blue and gilded clouds and colorful peacocks and flowering cherry blossoms. So um, it has a lot of beautiful things happening and it is a wonderful traditional backdrop, I think, for our contemporary art that we acquired for the space. So um, something else that I'd really like for you to see is our beautiful cast glass fireplace. It's, um, it was made in New York by Stephen Cavallo and it's cast glass with um, silvering on the back side, which gives it just a bit of shimmer. I think it's so classic, but yet kind of a modern touch as well. So um, that was one of the highlights, I think, of the room. Um, one of our challenges I felt that we had is that we have eight foot ceilings. So it's always a challenge to try to stretch that and make the room feel bigger, but we used a high gloss lacquer on the ceiling and it really just reflects everything beautifully. Um, something else that we did was we took the draperies up as high as we possibly could so that the windows appear to go up to the ceiling as well. So I think we, we really um, had a successful transformation of the room. And I would say the fireplace is probably one of the biggest architectural uh, transformations that we made. Um, I also want you to notice the Hans Wegner chairs. These are mid-century modern designs and our Robert Quo drum stool in between. We also have um, a beautiful rug that was produced by J.D. Starron. It's silk on a jute background and the texture is just amazing. Um, one of my favorite designers, Jan Showers, has given us this beautiful Maryland sofa, which came from her collection. And we used what I'll call a rosé mohair on it, which we think is very elegant and fun. And um, the mirror that we've perched above that beautiful sofa is an Achille Salvagni mirror. It's very special contemporary design and it's one of, um, of a limited edition. Um, we also, uh, along with the ceiling, wanted to make sure that our light fixture did not come down too low and impose on our space. So we did a fixture from Urban Electric that um, hugs the ceiling tightly, but also adds a lot of interest. 
something else I think very special about the space, and this was one of the first things that I found, was this Philip and Kelvin Laverne coffee table. So it's another mid-century design, and Philip and Kelvin Laverne would take their pieces made that are made out of bronze, they would bury them in the soil, and then the minerals from the soil would create this incredible patina. So you get lots of different variations of colors, which if you'll notice this foliage pattern, it really ties in so well with our scheme and with the flowering blossoms on our wallpaper. So it was really just a beautiful tie-in. And the, the coffee table was one of the very first things that I found for the space. So I loved how that really is accented by everything else. Something else that I think is very special about the space is our custom banquette. It was designed based on a um, vintage Vladimir Kagan design. And we had it custom made just to fit our little corner of the room. And we used contrasting fabrics to add a little interest. So we have a wonderful little inviting spot over there for, for you to sit and enjoy the space. So when starting the design process, one of the first things I like to do, especially with a show house environment, is come up with something that really gets us excited about the room, and that is, for this room, the Gracie wall covering. It's a beautiful hand-painted wall covering, and we've selected that, and coming from that, we start to develop our scheme and bring together all of our um, fabrics and textures and layering in the the rug and all of the different furnishings. And one of my favorite parts of the room, I would say, is how we layered in the contemporary art on top of this beautiful traditional wall covering pattern. So um, one of the things that I love most about our room, I feel like we were very fortunate to have a room with so many windows. And in the morning when the sun comes in, it's just amazing, the sunlight. And it's been great to see how, this, how the room changes throughout the day and the moods. But in the morning, it's really special as the sunlight comes in. And part of the thinking regarding our bar was that it not be just a traditional bar cart. We thought that tea was really a bit more elegant elegant and maybe would be more of a room that you would use in the morning. So one of the most interesting pieces I think that really should be highlighted in our space is this beautiful 19th century Chinese porcelain charger, which is set into a gilded bronze base. I just feel like it was really the um, perfect little accent to make our room have the elegance that I was looking for. So I was really excited that the room already came with these bookshelves. Um, we loved bringing the wall covering into the back of the bookshelf so that it continued our look all the way through the space. And I would say one of, the, one of our last things that we like to do to finalize our design is accessories. A lot of thought was given to what would make sense with our wall covering and the colors and the shapes, and we didn't really want to detract from the wall covering, but we brought in some beautiful contemporary bronze pieces, and then we layered in some antique vessels, porcelain pieces, and some books to just really give it a lot of interest and texture. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Kurt Belowski, and we are at Kipps Bay, Dallas, and I am the kitchen and scullery designer. You know, I think the thing about this kitchen for me um, was, you know, obviously people spend a great deal of time in the kitchen, and, you know, people, friends and family come to the kitchen. So I wanted it to be warm, I wanted it to be inviting, but I also wanted it to be sophisticated and chic. So it's a balancing act, obviously, but this is truly a cook's kitchen. I designed it as a cook's kitchen. Um, I have built uh, hundreds of kitchens at this point. And so I took all the things that I think work well in a kitchen to create the space. Uh, the first thing I did was on the island, I put all the cooking because that way you're able to focus on uh, your guests and people can talk to one another versus sort of having your back to guests as you're cooking against a wall. So that's one thing that I think is really important. Um, I offered quad ovens on the back wall because I think it makes it a lot, um, just cooking sort of seamless. You're able to do a lot of different things at one time. That includes steam oven, speed oven, and uh, convection ovens. 
Um, and then obviously great refrigeration. And I did a little coffee bar because I thought it'd be fun to have a space where you could just sort of separate it, where you could come and get a coffee and then sit in this lounge area. Um, I love the idea of a kitchen sort of being multi-use again. So instead of just plunking a table down here, I created a seating area because I thought it'd be more fun. Uh, you could sit and read the paper, you can have a cup of coffee, or you can have a glass of wine. People can be cooking and it's just a lot more fun. So again, that's kind of how I looked at it. So we're in the scullery part of the, of the kitchen now, um, or working pantry if, if uh, you please. Um, and here really the idea started again, um, beyond the floor in this uh, space, I really worked with starting with this cabinetry. I found this in an old book and wanted to do something that's sort of special that you don't see in most pantries. Um, so it's a root uh, vegetable uh, area and it's also all dry goods. So it's a very sort of specialized pantry. Uh, beyond this, we in the same space, I, because it is a working pantry, I've got uh, a dishwasher, I've got an ice maker, there's an under counter refrigerator, all hot, hidden behind cabinets that again were inspired by um, old cabinetry that I found in books. So this space is supposed to feel functional and modern, but still have that sort of old timeless effect. So one of the things um, that I like to do is mix old and new and uh, more traditional and more modern. So in this kitchen, there are very traditional elements, but I also wanted to incorporate um, some really interesting modern uh, ideas. And I, I kind of did that through uh, contemporary and modern art. So behind me, I did a um, whole sort of section here. It also sort of addressed the situation of having this huge vaulted space to try and work the walls in a little different way. I did something that's a little different over the kitchen sink area as well, um, where I paired this beautiful Calcutta Rosa marble um, on the bottom, but on the top I did contemporary art again, just to give sort of a juxtaposition of the space. So uh, the one thing that, again, I really wanted to stress when I was building the space was, you know, I love to cook. So I looked at this as how would I want to use the space and really be able to cook in the space. So for instance, I have um, a, a huge uh, cooktop area versus just a typical 36 inch sort of cooktop. We've got uh, quad induction cooking. I added gas because I have clients that are always asking for gas with induction, so I did both. Uh, Gen Air actually offers something I've never actually used before or seen before, which is a induction walk, which is really interesting and I think a very clever idea on their part. Uh, in addition to that, um, we have a griddle um, for you know great pancakes with the family or anything else that you want. Um, so I think from a cook's perspective, this is a really, really, really high function space. And I love the fact that again, I'm not cooking to a wall, I'm cooking out. So all of my guests can be seated either in bar stools um, or they can be seated in the seating area and we can have a nice time of it versus just sort of being, you know, drudgery of cooking. Um, in addition to that, I, like I mentioned, I love quad ovens and having uh, the opportunity to do lots and lots of baking, also steam oven and speed oven, gives people a lot of opportunities um, for great meals. In this space, you know, the ceilings go from on the low side about 17 feet all the way up to 37 feet, so it's a really unusual space. Um, I actually worked with a company uh, based in Vermont to build and create a custom light fixture for this space that hopefully brings the scale down and makes it feel more human. This is actually six feet wide by six feet tall. It was too wide to actually bring in in fullness into the um, into the room or into the house. So we actually brought it in in pieces and installed it right here on site. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.